What's going on guys, Super Savage uh, 789 here, bringing you guys a video and tell you what if Goku was in Naruto, part 1. Now without further ado, let's just get into the story. Goku's space pod drifts through space towards Earth, getting closer and closer to his destination. In space, however, a what-if wormhole opens up, sucking the space pod through to an almost identical universe, the Naruto universe. With the destination set to go to Earth, he'd arrive, heading straight towards what we know as a hidden leaf village. Normally, people would notice the weird alien ship coming towards Earth, however all their attention is focused on the massive Ninetales fox rampaging in their village currently. As his pod approaches the leaf village, it is hit very hard by one of the tails of the fox, coincidentally hitting Goku's head in the process. His pod is knocked into the outskirts of the village, all broken apart due to the power of the beast. It leaves the baby inside, staring into the sky, where he sees something of interest. The full moon. Instantly, Goku begins to grow rapidly, getting fear all over as he becomes bigger than any building. He lets out a monstrous roar as he becomes a mighty Ozaru, getting the attention of the people on the leaf, especially Kurama. Due to the feral beasts locking eyes, they rush at each other in what appears to be an epic fight for the ages. Appears being the key word. It wouldn't take long for Kurama to easily body Goku, though, due to the strength Kurama possesses. At least Minato being able to teleport Kurama away due to the distraction the Ozaru gave the Ninetales beast. In the process, he also cuts off Goku's tail with a kunai by accident, before teleporting away. Hiruzen and a small group rush over as the Ozaru slowly begins to shrink to make sure they can apprehend it. When they arrive, however, they see that it's just a small infant child crying wildly. This confuses them, as they realise this baby is behind the beast. They don't have much time to really think about this, though. Hiruzen asks two of the guards to take the boy back to the Hokage office, as he and the rest of them rush off to help Minato, where the rest plays out normally. The next day, Hiruzen would see to Goku. He asks Inoichi, the head of the Amanaka clan, to read the boy's mind, to see what he remembers, but what he does remember is very minimalistic. He shows that this boy has amnesia, and doesn't remember most, if not all of his actions. Hiruzen decides to give the boy a chance, and lets him live in the leaf village, giving him the name Goku, after the ancient tale of the Monkey King. Goku would live in the leaf village, and grows up like any other kid would. Due to Danzo being Danzo, he'd end up declaring Goku was the boy behind the Ozaru attack, and so the Leaf Village would hate on Goku, just like they do Naruto. This doesn't faze him that much though, since he is quite aloof. Goku would spend most of his time training on his own, or eating food, just like he typically does, and for the most part, no one really has a problem with this. At least he isn't as annoying as Naruto is. One day, after Goku was done eating, he was walking through the Leaf Village and spotted Naruto causing a prank. It made him laugh and fall over how funny the blonde boy truly was. So later that day, Goku goes and finds Naruto on the swing outside the academy. He says hello to him and tells him that his joke was really funny, which Naruto thanks him for. He leaps up shouting how he's a comedic genius and the future Hokage. He tries to make a clone and makes a tiny clone like in the last, which Goku finds even more hilarious. Goku and Naruto end up forming a good relationship, since they don't really have anyone else to talk to. It results in them training together, eating together, and doing pranks together, which the both boys really love. In the academy, Goku's test results will be pretty bad. That is unless the questions are on straight combat, but nothing strategical. It makes sense that he's able to understand fighting and stuff due to that being what's on his mind purely focuses on, due to natural instinct. Most people in the academy don't really have an opinion on Goku and his laid-back personality, since he isn't a loudmouth like Naruto. He does get people eyes when in taijutsu training since he typically wipes the floor against whoever he's fighting, but other than that, he basically blends into the background. In class, when practicing molding chakra, Goku just doesn't seem to get it. Aruka chalks us up due to a lack of chakra control and tries to instruct him. While this is a bit more clearer, it merely leads to Goku creating a tiny yellow ball in his hand. This further confuses Aruka as he decides to pay the Hokage a visit with this dilemma. Haruzen comes up with the idea that Goku might not have chakra, since the Sage of Six Path bestowed chakra onto all of them, and Goku is seemingly not from this world. He decides to check this by asking a Hyuga clan member to check this, and surely enough, his hypothesis is proven correct. Instead, there's a seemingly yellow flowing energy through his body that resembles chakra, though it clearly isn't that. Since it somewhat resembles chakra, Haruzen believes that it might share the same properties as chakra, and doesn't currently give Goku any special treatment. 
After two failed attempts though, and no progress, the Hokage realizes that this probably isn't the case, so he decides to give Goku some special treatment after all. He takes Goku aside and tells him that he'll give him a special test for him to pass the academy. He tells Goku that he needs to learn to manipulate his ki and be able to form a blast, which Goku thinks might be hard. So to help him, Haruzen gives him a sturdy staff that should be useful to both channel ki into and to learn to control ki without it. Goku will train intensely for this. With help from Naruto, he'd most likely be able to do this by the time of graduation. He also learns that this staff is quite useful in combat, so he decides to keep it. Now, would Naruto learn ki? Well, no. Goku's only just now barely got a grasp of the power, and so he can't teach him this power as of now. Could he potentially learn it in the future? It's a possibility, but you'll have to find out. After graduation, Goku goes looking for Naruto and finds him on a swing. When seeing his friend upset, he tries to make him feel better, but it doesn't work, and Naruto just tries to say that he wants to be alone. So he walks off to be alone, where he runs into Mizuki. The whole thing goes the same, and Goku learns about it after the fact. With Shadow Clones, the training the duo can do increases tenfold. Goku finds it super cool that Naruto can do this, and wishes that he had a technique that could do that. Maybe in the future, he will. Now, what Genin team would Goku be assigned to? I'm going to say he's assigned to Team 8 instead of Shino, mainly because Shino won't be that important to the story anyways. When joining the team, Kiba would actually hate Goku since he's an aloof idiot and that really conflicts with his personality. His insults never land on Goku, which just further cements his rage. As for Hinata, she'd probably find Goku funny. Since she knows that he is Naruto's best friend, she sees him as pretty cool and they become fast friends. One day, Kiba just loses it. He tells Goku that he's just a dumb monkey who probably doesn't know the difference between a dishcloth and marriage. When Goku asks if those are types of food, Ki believes that this is him being snarky and trying to insult him back. With his blood now boiling, he tells Goku that he'll show him. He throws a punch at Goku, which he easily evades. He then gets into a fighting stance, telling Kiba that he doesn't mind some sparring. Kiba and Goku begin to fight, which Hinata and Kuro and I watch from afar. After Taijutsu doesn't work against Goku, Kiba decides to go for the down on all fours jutsu. He rushes at Goku, trying to speed blitz him, and while he gets a couple good hits in, Goku manages to adapt to Kiba's new fighting style. In classic Goku style, he closes his eyes and then uses his very own up in the trees jutsu. Just like a monkey would, Goku leaps into the trees, beginning to make monkey noises as he bounces from tree branch to tree branch. When knowing that Kiba is off guard, Goku leaps from the trees and hits him with a staff that he has now dubbed the Nyoibo. He leaves a traditional anime bump on his head, making Goku laugh. So Kiba decides to use his final ace in the hole. He gives Akamaru a military pill, and together they use the human mimicry and beast mimicry, creating two equally strong opponents that Goku now has to battle. When the duo begin fighting Goku, he does much better than expected. He has been sparring with Naruto's Shadow Clone, so he knows how to fight multiple opponents. Plus, his new Aibo comes in handy during this. It leads to him putting both Kiba and Akamaru on their ass. Kiba begins to self-loathe at this defeat. How could he lose to such a simpleton? But then he sees a hand held out to him. Goku offers him a hand up, chuckling that it was a really good match, and they should do it again. Kiba takes that hand, realizing that maybe Goku isn't all that bad. It doesn't take long for Goku and Kiba to become friends, where they occasionally do spar together. Seeing the potential in Goku, Kurana would most likely ask Asuma to give him some training. Asuma would spar with Goku, and while he's holding back a lot, he's impressed with the skill Goku demonstrates. He even teaches him how to make his new Aibo stronger by channeling Ki into it. When Naruto returns from the Land of Waves, he and Goku would go and get ramen to catch up about what's been happening. Naruto tells the monkey boy about what happened, which Goku finds exciting. Let's move swiftly along to the tuning exams arc. Goku would be there and spectates the battle between Sasuke and Lee. Seeing how strong Lee is with just Taijutsu gets Goku excited. He runs over, asking Lee for a sparring match, which Bushy Brows would agree to. Both of them would be suppressed, and would begin to exchange blows using solely Taijutsu. Since both are Taijutsu experts, this battle is intense, and only Elite can keep up. Being pretty boring though, Neji steps in the way, telling Lee that they can't be late. As they walk away, Goku shouts that they should fight again, which Lee reacts to by putting his thumb up and smiling. In the written exams, Team A manages to pass like in canon. Goku ends up falling asleep during the exam, and so he doesn't answer any questions, but he also sits there for the 10th question, meaning they pass. In the Forest of Death, while the whole thing with the sound trio happens like normal, Team A end up in a similar place by witnessing Gara brutally murder those Genin. Hinata, Kiba, and Akamaru are all paralyzed by fear. Goku isn't, though. He leaps out and shouts towards Gara that he's strong and that they should fight. Both Gara's and Goku's teammates stare in fear and shock as Gara slowly turns towards Goku, bloodlust irradiating off of him. 
He raises up his hand that consumes Goku in a crushing sand coffin, which Goku leaps out of, ready for battle. The battle is very similar to Lee vs Gara, as you can imagine. I'd put Goku at around base Lee's strength about weights, which is quite alarming on up against Gara. The fight is definitely epic, watching Goku fight off Gara's sand and getting in hits, but slowly he is worn down. His body is beaten with the amounts of sand beating him down, leaving him very bloodied and very beaten. As sand begins to consume Goku, he sees his friends in the trees. He realizes that he can't die here and lets out a scream of rage. A yellow blasted key blows the sand off of him, saving Goku, believing him exhausted. Before Gara can finish him off though, Keeper rockets him with the fang of a fang, grabbing Goku and escaping. Team 8 would still pass, but with the knowledge about how dangerous Gara really is truly cemented into their mind. In the preliminaries, I'm not going to randomize the fights for the most part, or I'm going to change two fights, since Goku being there would randomize it, if only a little bit. So the first change fight would be Dosu vs Zaku. I think we all know Dosu would win, so let's not go into any many specifics and just say he does. The next fight would be Goku vs Choji. With Goku still really battle damage, Choji isn't very worried about winning. To pump him up, Ino even shouts to kick his opponent's ass. When the fight begins, Choji uses the human expansion jutsu and rolls at Goku, who manages to jump over him. Choji then throws a big fist at Goku, which he manages to block. The duo go back and forth with Goku doing his best to keep up. The fight comes to a brief stop when both participants pull out a bento box and begin eating lunch, which would be quite comedic. With this new boost in trance from eating food, Goku rushes at Choji and begins to speed blitz him. With a quick beatdown, Choji is unable to battle as Ino cheers for Goku and the match is set. And that's going to be him, if you like and subscribe and comment let us know what will happen in the next part. Let me know if you guys like this and I will continue it, because you know, it could go either way. And so yeah, bye!